Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, the par the paragraph, the one of the seven goals, uh, uh, stresses the um, importance of uh, structural resilience for school and uh, healthcare facilities. The aim of the goal can be um, simply paraphrased as um, avoiding uh, school and hospital closures due to disasters. I don't know. Um, it's only me. Let's um, let's see here. Okay, thank you. So, there you go. Oh, yes. Perfect. Okay, so it was, um, it happened, the, the earthquake happened in uh, 2011. It was March 11th, Friday afternoon here in Japan time, and it was uh, magnitude 9.0. And it was the biggest uh, earthquake uh, that hit Japan in the recent uh, history. And next uh, slide, uh, please. Um, and Miyagi here is the largest hit um, prefecture um, of all. Uh, in total, more than uh, almost uh, 20,000 people were killed uh, by uh, the disaster, mostly by the tsunami. And the next slide shows the um, picture of uh, Arahama Elementary School in Sendai. It was located about uh, 700 meters uh, away from the shore. And, and uh, the next slide uh, uh, will tell you the, um, that um, the entire community um, surrounding the school has been completely obliterated uh, by the tsunami. Um, so um, the next slide please. So almost uh, uh, more than 300 people, including children who evacuated to the school all survived, as you can see. Uh, in, you know, uh, evacuating to the school roof, but um, about uh, 200 people in the community were lost. You can skip the next slide and uh, go to the next one. So a lot of schools were hit by the earthquake and tsunami, so the school had to close uh, for a while. And here are some of the things that the city of Sendai School Reopening Assisting Team did. Um, so this team was deployed uh, immediately after the earthquake and a lot of school assistants came from within the municipality and nationwide or, or from around the world. But just let me not uh, go through each of this. Next slide, please. So most schools in Sendai reopened exactly one month after uh, the earthquake. Um, as this picture shows, some children studied in a gym of another a school that was safe from tsunami, uh, also as shown in the next slide, which you saw uh, in uh, Professor Ichinose's presentation. You can, you can imagine so many efforts um, were put into bringing the school education uh, back to normal. So um, next please. Um, meanwhile, our pre-service students here in Miyagi University of Education um, who themselves uh, suffered from the disaster at the time um, took uh, positive actions uh, moving forward. They, they went ahead to, to help young children to continue to learn at school. They frequently visited the schools in the affected areas and interacted uh, with the children and helping the children learn after school uh, or during the summer and winter break. So this um, a volunteering also helped teachers who had overwhelming amount of work um, responding to the disaster at the time. So as a result, um, that this whole um, process gave our pre-service students um, sort of a, a service learning, you know, active learning opportunity. And we were very happy that uh, our students at the time were able to engage in the process of reopening school and um, overcoming difficulties together with the children and teachers. Next slide, please. So um, what came out of this um, uh, was a new uh, education program and training system for our pre-service and in-service uh, teachers here at uh, MUE. We became very much aware that the school education can play a significant role in disaster education and communication 
and that uh, we should better teach about hazards, um, risks, vulnerabilities, um, preparedness, response, and management in our school system more um, systematically. So um, we should uh, teach teachers how to teach um, these things, so to speak. So a lot of our colleagues here became very much motivated to create a program to strengthen our disaster risk reduction education. I'm not going to explain all this uh, today, um, but you know, joining um, the uh, PROSPERNET uh, joint research program is, uh, is a one example, uh, the post-2011 uh, initiative. So that's uh, what we have now as a legacy from 2011. And if you could go to the next slide. And that's something we could do uh, now with the coronavirus pandemic as well. Uh, we can create an educational program to make our society more resilient uh, from biological hazards and learn uh, how to live with it. Um, school is a place of learning and we are learning a lot from this pandemic. So teacher can teach students about um, scientific background of infectious disease, uh, social response, discriminations, uh, many other aspects with uh, Corona, uh, with Corona era. And very similar to natural disaster education, if students learn about uh, risk and prevention, then the knowledge can be uh, transmitted to their parents and hopefully um, spread to the wider community, um, you know, for the better risk communication and awareness raising as um, Dr. Powell mentioned the risk conception and uh, for you know the, for the risk behavior change prevention behavior so in that sense just as we did with post uh, 2011 disaster recovery we need to um, train our educators on this subject um, and I don't know what uh, we should do there, there was a question uh, that was just posted a few minutes ago from our colleague in the Philippines, I think, who is a DRL coordinator, who's trying to help schools reopen, and uh, what kind of uh, roles um, the you know DRL coordinator can play is a big question. Um, here in Miyagi, there's a system in place to designate one uh, teacher in, who is in charge of DRL in each school, and board board of education from time to time invites these uh, teacher in charge uh, to uh, um, uh, training program and then they, then they learn you know how to deal with the DRL education so similar um, training can be uh, made or provided for those teachers who is helping the school reopen as well I think so um, that kind of existing system may be a good example for the COVID-19 uh, resilience building. So please, uh, next uh, slide. Um, I think I'm running out of time. So um, here are some of the assessments uh, we observe in terms of challenges surfaced during the natural disasters and the COVID-19. Uh, and I'm not going to go through all this because my colleague uh, Dr. Saito uh, will touch on this. But a lot of uh, parents are very much uh, stressed out for sheltering, losing jobs, and so, so on. And that's actually affecting the children uh, as well. So um, the uh, increasing number of uh, domestic violence cases are reported and teachers are working on that kind of additional social service welfare aspects. Um, and they themselves are, themselves are often uh, parents and they became really busy and tired. So. That's something uh, you know uh, we should also uh, work on. And let me skip the rest, and including the next slide. And for the matter of time, uh, let's go to. Uh, uh, let me hand over to my colleague, Dr. Ryo Saito, to uh, mention about uh, Japan's uh, situation of COVID-19. Uh, this is Ryo Saito from Miyagi University of Education. I'm an assistant professor. Nice to meet you. Uh, I will explain school education while and after school closure caused by COVID-19 in Japan. 
uh, school education in Japan and the state of emergency. In general, in Japan, school entrance is in April and graduation is in March. The state of emergency in Japan from April to May. School education, schools were closed. That school teachers, government, companies, comedians, and extra supported children's learning, a children's education, and uh, their lives. Wide school closure. What did teachers and children did? Teachers create hundreds for their students, and students learned from them. Children did staggered attendance at few times. Some children were allowed to come to school because of some reasons. For example, their low age uh, parents' works or, and jobs. Teachers consider and make plans for reopening school, for example, curriculum and health care. Teachers did sterilization inside school. And the government and the company conducted some supports. Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry opened the website. The name is hashtag Future school not for stopping learning. And next, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology also open website. The title is Website for Cheering Children's Learning. Children can learn from these websites. While some companies are allowed to read manga, Japanese comics for free in the internet. The Asahi newspaper reported, please enjoy reading manga in online in free while school closure. And moreover, comedians uploaded movies for learning. Yoshio Kojima explains how to understand clock for K1 mathematics. And more. Japanese one of the famous comedian and musician Pico Taro uploaded movie for explaining how to wash hands. Uh, the time is coming, so I skip to show this movie. But I suppose this makes children to be familiar with and to be accustomed to hand washing. I think this is a kind of science communication. After school closure, reopening of school. School has started, but some limitations. For example, no group work and pair works, and the needed to make time to wash hand. Anxiety and concerning. How to get children used to school? How to catch up learning? and learning gaps between schools and children. That's all. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening.